All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Game Time. This is Noble Mike Jameson dialed in to you today for uh, a great day to really share today's training topic. And uh, I'm really excited about this one because this is something that I learned uh, many years ago. And uh, it was through the application of what I'm about to talk to you today that I got so much uh, value out of in, in really learning how to self-development myself, right? Because when you get into the, the networking industry or you get into the home-based business industry, you know, one of the things you want to do is build a big team, right? Make a lot of money, have a lot of fun and travel the world, of course, right? However, uh, part of that is making sure that you become a better person along the way, right? And so today's topic is really talking about the four types of knowledge that you gain uh, through your personal development journey. And so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each of these. Uh, maybe during another session, we'll go into detail about um, a couple of these as well. But we're going to talk about the four types of knowledge today. And I want you to take notes because I'm 100% confident that each of you that's listening to today's training have experienced one or all of these types of knowledge before. 100% confident of that. And I want you to know that every subject matter that you intend to master would go through all four phases of this knowledge they're going to talk about. Go through all four phases, okay? So today's um, topic, the four types of knowledge are as such, learn knowledge, activity knowledge, modeling knowledge, and teaching knowledge. I repeat, learn knowledge, activity knowledge, modeling knowledge, and teaching knowledge, okay? So let's take the very first one, learn knowledge. What is learned knowledge? Learned knowledge is knowledge that you gain from the classroom, right? Or from a training or from some type of environment where you are a sponge and you're just gaining the content and bullet points of said subject matter, okay? That's learned knowledge. So for example, if you were wanting to learn how to ride a bicycle, okay, and you picked up a book and you read in the book, obviously you got to have a bicycle, <laughs> okay, that goes without saying, uh, but it says that uh, you must first stand the bicycle up vertically on both wheels, okay, uh, visualize this, assume you don't know how to ride a bicycle, but you got to visualize what I'm saying. At first, you must stand the bicycle up vertically on both wheels and, and lift up the kickstand, okay? And lift up the kickstand. And then in the book, you read that you must uh, straddle the bicycle with one leg on each side of the bicycle, left leg on the left side, right leg on the right side. Now, you're reading this. You're reading the instructions on how to ride a bicycle. OK, um, and then in the small print, it says you must learn to balance yourself vertically on the bicycle as you start to pedal. All right. And it goes on to explain how to pedal. You, you guys get what I'm saying. So you're in an, a you're in a, a, a mode where you're learning how to ride a bicycle. Now, you don't know how to ride a bicycle, but you're learning how to ride a bicycle. Um, so you're on the bicycle, you got to, you know, balance yourself. Obviously, you got to maybe push yourself off a little bit. You, you know, you can imagine when you first learned to ride a bicycle, you didn't know how to balance. You might have even had training wheels, right? But nevertheless, you can get the point that this learned knowledge phase of learning how to ride a bicycle doesn't necessarily mean you know how to ride a bicycle, okay? But you're learning how to it. You're gathering information. You're understanding what you have to do. And so the learned knowledge part of uh, your business or part of 
your subject matter is so important because it's giving you all of the details you need to be successful. Now, by no stretch of the imagination, do you know how to do it yet? But you're learning. Okay. You're gathering. All right. I like to call it, it's the discovery process. You're trying to learn what it is you don't know. Right. That's why it's called learned knowledge. You're trying to learn what it is you don't know. You haven't put it into practice yet. All right. We'll talk about that. That's the next phase. Okay. So you're trying to learn what it is you don't know. You're trying to learn what it is you don't know. So in this phase, you are gathering information. Now, I don't know how long it would take you to get to this phase for said subject matter, but it could take a small period of time. It could be somewhat moderate. It could be somewhat long, but you're gathering information. Okay. You're gathering information. Now, once you've gathered the information and you are hundred percent confident that you know what you know, now you want to move to the second type of knowledge or the second phase of knowledge, which is called activity knowledge. Write that down. Activity knowledge. Now, activity knowledge is where you take the learned knowledge that you've acquired and you put it into work. OK, now, please understand that there's some things you will learn in the activity knowledge phase that you couldn't learn in the learn knowledge phase. Write that down. There will be some things that you will learn by doing the activity that you couldn't learn by just studying and reading and processing the information in the learn side of the, uh, in the first phase of learn knowledge. Okay. And so what do I mean by that? So there are some things that um, experience teaches you, okay? That maybe it wasn't written in the book because as you can imagine, if we go back to the bicycle example, there are probably a thousand different scenarios that can happen once you start the process of riding the bicycle. You could be going up a hill so you may have to paddle a little harder you could be going down a hill so you may have to um you know utilize the brakes a little bit more so there are some things that will not be mentioned during the learn phase that you will learn during the activity phase that's why it's called activity knowledge it's the knowledge you gain by doing the activity i will say by the way that the second phase this activity knowledge is where most people 95 percent of the people in business fail because of the activity knowledge phase they never get past the step step number two they never get past the step okay so they're willing to go out and learn their product learn their services they're willing to go out and and do those things because it doesn't require you for the most part to face any fears. It doesn't require you to face any fears when you're talking about the learn knowledge phase in business. But when it comes to the activity knowledge, now you have to potentially face some fears because you have to go out and do something, right? Activity, you have to do something that you might not have ever done before. And therefore, there's a little bit of trepidation or fear involved. And this is where most people fail, because if you're in business and you you spent the first 30 days, the first 60 days, the first 90 days learning all about your products or learning all about your services. Now is time to go out and activate. It's time to go out and do. Most people are not willing to do that. This is where the failure happens. Right. This is where the failure happens. So now you got to go out and sell your product. You got to go out there and market your service. This is where people drop the ball. So if you can, if you can figure out, right, how to muster enough confidence 
to go through the activity knowledge phase, you're going to be successful. You're going to be successful because this is where 95% of the people fail is in doing the activity. Yes, they're willing to jump on the Zoom. Yes, they're willing to go to the training. Yes, they're willing to attend the meeting. But when it comes time to doing, this is where they fail. So if you're going to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to get past or go through the activity knowledge phase of your business, you're going to be successful. And if we take it to the home-based business arena, let me give you an analogy on how your leadership knows on whether or not you're persevering through the activity phase of your business in, in whatever it is you do, right? And whatever it is you do, because it shows, you know, your leaders know, your coaches know if your mentee, mentee is going through the activity because there's certain things that you will discover through doing the activity that you couldn't discover when you were just learning. There's certain things that happen to you physically, mentally, and emotionally by doing the activity. Case in point, let's imagine if you were going to get a job working in a warehouse. Follow me here. Let's imagine you were going to get a job working in a warehouse. Now, it may not be your perfect choice. I actually worked in a warehouse when I was in high school. And you had to learn what you needed to do, right? When I worked in a warehouse in high school, I was, um, uh, I don't even know what the role was. I think I responded to a uh, an ad in the newspaper. And um, I went to the interview, got the job, and I would work in the warehouse and and I had to learn what I needed to do. First of all, I had to get there at like 7 a.m. or 6.55 or whatever. You know, it was an hourly job. Had to have on these um, work gloves, steel toe boots. I mean, it was real warehouse work. And what we were doing, what I learned doing my, uh, uh, doing my training, right? When I first got there, my first two weeks, in terms of learning, learn knowledge and what I had to do, they were explaining to me, was that when you build these uh, these brick buildings, you know they have those gray center blocks, those gray center blocks that you see that most of these buildings are built with. Uh, between those gray center blocks is the is the kind of like the paste cement stuff that they seal with the blocks. But in between that, there's wire. Okay, there's wire in between that. And, and, and when I was learning uh, in the warehouse what I was supposed to do, this wire helps um, helps those center blocks stay firm uh, in between the different layers when they put the paste on there, right? The, the cement paste or whatever it is, right? Well, this wire, uh, they would dip this wire in a uh, in molten, some type of molten, liquid molten uh, mold or whatever it is. And then it, they would lift it up and it would dry but it would be stuck together in stacks. So maybe there was like 15 level, uh, fifteen wires stacked together, uh, but it was molded together because they wanted to make sure it was firm. It was wired, but they wanted to make sure it was firm. So once it dried from the molten liquid that they dipped it in, it had to be broken apart, okay? So these wires would actually come on a, like on a, uh, not necessarily a dolly, but on a, a cart, and they would put it in front of our station, stacks of these wires that were at this point uh, molted together because they were dipped into the liquid, the hot liquid that has dried at this point. So what we would have to do in the warehouse is that we would have to take this, these, these uh, molted wires that are molded together, pick them up and drop them on the concrete and break them, break the mold between them so they're not stuck together. They're actually separated now, right? And it was, I think it was 15 of those that would ultimately be together. So you have to bust them on the ground, bust them on the ground, bust them on the ground. So I learned this before I actually had to do it. I had to learn what the job was. It was serious labor, by the way. And so we would get these carts. You would have about four, um, uh, four stacks of uh, those wires that was molted together. You had to pick it up, bust it in front of you, and make sure that each section had separated. So when you moved it to the next section of the warehouse, the uh, the wires were no longer stuck together. There were spaces in between. 
So I learned that my job was to bust these wires on the ground. Okay. I learned that. Then I had to go do it. Okay. Excuse me. That's my uh, computer making a crazy sound. Uh, some my trade ideas going off. Then I had to go do it. Right. I learned what I needed to do. Then I had to go into the activity part of my role for working in the warehouse. Right. So now I'm at work. I got my steel toe boots on. I got my goggles on. I got my heart, my gloves on. My cart shows up. Now the activity has to come into play. Okay. So now I've, I've learned what I need to do. Now I got to go through the activity. All right. And so what I learned by doing was that first of all, when I, uh, when I, first of all, I had to learn how to pick these wires up because you just can't pick it up in one section because you'd be out of balance. So I had to learn the proper position to put my hands, even to lift it up. That was something that I learned through doing the process of the activity. I didn't learn that when I was in study, right? I learned that, hey, this is how you place your hands. The other thing that I learned is that I learned how not to get calluses on my hands, right? Um, by by using the proper types of gloves. These are all things that I learned through activity knowledge, by doing the activity, okay? I learned that when I bust these wires on the ground that I wanted to make sure that the middle uh, part of the uh, the wire hit the ground first and not the end because if you hit the end, then it pops up and a lot of the molten stuff goes everywhere. So you want to bust it in the middle. These are things that I learned by doing the activity, I, okay, this is activity knowledge, stuff that I didn't learn in the beginning when they were going through my orientation. No, I learned by doing the activity. Now, I want you to process this. As I'm going through the activity knowledge part of the phase, because visualize this, if this was physical labor, there were certain parts of my physique that changed over time because of the activity knowledge. Meaning I'm picking up this met these uh these wires. It's almost like doing dumbbell curls in the gym, right? It's almost like doing dumbbell curls in the gym. Okay. And because of that, I started to develop a physique in my biceps, in my back, and in my legs. My because I'm bending down, picking up, it's almost like doing squats or lunges. So my physique started to change because of the activity that I was doing. Follow me here. So it would be very difficult for me after working on the job, doing the activity for 90 days, it would be very difficult for me to have my physique not change if I was doing the work. So just imagine if I went to my boss and my boss asked me, hey, Mike, are you actually working in the warehouse? And I said, yes, but I had no physique change. He or she would automatically know I was lying. He or she would automatically know I was lying if I've worked in the warehouse during the activity for 90 days with no physique change. Because it's virtually impossible to do that activity and not have physique change. It's impossible. You can't lift up the wires, bust them on the ground, you know, pick them up, move them around and not have physique change. It's impossible to do the right activity on the job in this case and not have physique change. So he or she would know immediately if I was lying. Right. And it's the same thing that happens in your business. Your coach or mentor knows immediately if you're lying about whether or not you're doing the activity part of your business. There's certain things like that not necessarily may change in your physique, but they may change in your mentality because he or she knows that something is going to grow. Something is going to change. And they're looking for that adjustment in behavior. They're looking for that adjustment in mentality. They're looking for that adjustment that only they know you will get from doing the activity of your business. They know it. So when they give you the assignment, right, through the learn knowledge phase of your business, and then they give you the activity to do, they know if you did it or not because they're looking for the change in 90 days. They know what type of growth you will experience by doing the activity. 
It's amazing how this works. And so most people in business never persevere, right? They never go through the activity part of their business, and this is where they stay stuck. So they're wondering why they're not having success, right? Because they never lifted up. They never went through the warehouse. They never went through it. They never bust the wires. They didn't do it, right? They didn't make the phone call. There's, there's certain things that happen when you make the phone call. There's certain things that happen when you make the dial. You understand? There's certain things you learn through that activity that you can't learn through the, the through the first phase of, of knowledge. You can't learn it. You only learn it by doing the activity. So by making the phone calls, your success coach knows if you did it or not. They're looking for the change. That's why activity knowledge is so critical. 95% of the people fail right here until they are willing to persevere through it and gain that knowledge that they get and the change that they experience from that phase. It's the critical phase. This phase will determine on whether or not you'll be successful in this business, the home-based business industry, networking. This phase, if you're not willing to do the activity knowledge, the activity part of what it is you've been asked to do, you will not have success. You will not have success. If you're not willing to, maybe part of your success from your success coach may be based off your talents to be a presenter, but you haven't presented. They know that. Or maybe part of your task may be to be a trainer, but you haven't trained. To be a greeter, but you haven't greeted. To, you know what I'm saying? They know that. And so if you're not willing to go through the activity part of your business, you're not going to have success because something about that phase allows you to become. It allows you to become. The third knowledge is modeling knowledge. So we, we talked about what you get from, from learn knowledge, like the classroom knowledge, right? Uh, it's kind of interesting because, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I grew up in a, uh, in a not so well to do uh, area for the most part. And there's, there's this concept of having book smarts and street smarts, right? I'm pretty sure you guys have heard that before. It's a big difference be between being book smart, right? Being wise and crafty in a, in a classroom and being street smarts, things you learn on the streets is a big difference. Different type of knowledge is my point. <laughs> do, two different types of knowledge altogether. It's, it's often said that, you know, it, the perception is when you have book smarts uh, that you are naive to the street knowledge, right? Normally, a person with street knowledge can transition into the classroom because they, they've experienced some things that are a little more raw, that are a little more uncut in the streets, right? That, that they can translate that to the classroom, polished up. But the folks that are book smart or classroom knowledge typically have a hard time transitioning to street knowledge because they have a certain amount of naiveness to it. That's the stereotype. But the third phase is called modeling knowledge. So first you go through learn knowledge, absorbing, consuming what it is you need to know. Then you go through the hardest phase, which is called activity knowledge, meaning you're now doing the activity and you're going to learn through that process. And because of, of you are, because you're willing to go through the process, there are certain things that are going to change and evolve and develop in you as a result of that. And because those things will develop in you, it will also elevate you. It's going to elevate you because now that you're willing to go through the activity, and people see that, you will now be inspiring others, right? Because now you've become the person with the biceps, the person with the quads, the person with the V-back, right? And people want to do the third phase, and that's model you, right? That's why the third knowledge is modeling knowledge. They want to model you, okay? But what you've done prior to that moment yourself is you've identified someone that you want to model. You've identified someone that you want to model. Now, you can have, uh, you can gather modeling knowledge 
be it up close or far away. In other words, you can have a mentor as someone that you talk to on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. Or you can have a, a mentor or a model that you follow that you never even met. But you follow through some platform and you see the brand and you see what they represent and you follow that. You model that. Okay, you hold them to a high esteem and you model that. It's called modeling knowledge. It's the, it's the knowledge that you gain by watching someone who has what you want. I've always been taught that you have to get around the people that have your solutions and get away from the people that have your problems. So you want to find a model, an example to follow and say, this is where I'm going. This is what I want to do. Model. Knowledge. So when you're in the modeling knowledge phase, you're going to be doing things that you haven't done before, but you're doing them because you see the example that's being set. Because, see, you're willing to do the activity. You, you've you already persevered through the hardest part, right? Second phase, activity, knowledge. So now looking at someone who has the lifestyle you want, who has the brand that you want to represent, and modeling them becomes a little bit easier. So now you have a model that you're following, and you represent a model, a model that can be followed. Modeling knowledge. The fourth and final knowledge is what I like to refer to as teaching knowledge. This one is the it's, it's the last one, but I would say it's probably the, I can't even say, they, they're all important. They're all important, okay? But teaching knowledge is very special because when you get to the teaching knowledge phase, it gives you another level of what I, what I like to refer to as overstanding. It gives you another level of overstanding, not understanding, but overstanding. Because when you take a note down in your notebook, knowing that you have to teach what it is you're writing down, you take a different type of note. Did you know that? Like if you knew that you was going to have to teach this podcast training, you would take a different type of note than you are as a student, right? You would take a different type of note because you probably want to know every single thing, every single concept, every single idea about said subject matter because you know that you got to turn around and teach it to someone else. So there's another level of overstanding that you get in the teaching knowledge phase, because now you not only have to understand the subject matter, you got to understand how to deliver it. That's why it's called teaching knowledge. Everybody who understands a concept are not great teachers. Did you know that? Everybody who's, you know, great at what they do may not necessarily be great at teaching. It says teaching is a skill. So you may master a concept, you may master an idea, but does it doesn't mean that you can deliver it to others. Doesn't necessarily mean that. So having a understanding and an overstanding in order to teach something is a skill. You take a different type of note. So I've always been of the uh, premise that when I'm in the learn knowledge phase, phase one, I take notes as if I'm going to teach it at some point. See, I like to start with the end in mind. I like to start with the end in mind. So when I'm when I'm when I'm sitting in somewhere, I'm taking notes in the learn knowledge phase, but I'm taking notes as if I got to teach it. So therefore, I add another level of detail. I add another level of comprehension. I, I add another level of perception of what I'm ultimately going to do. I do that part in the learn phase. Me personally, I don't wait to the end. I don't wait till I learn it. Activity, 
model and then go back and figure out how I can teach it. Nah, man, in the very beginning, I'm taking notes like I'm going to teach this stuff. It's a different type of note. But it's teaching knowledge. Okay? Uh, and, and through the teaching knowledge phase, you also learn more knowledge because you, you may have a concept or idea that you learned, that you've gone through the activity and that you've modeled, but when you have to teach it from your perspective, from your point of view, there may be a different analogy or life's experiences may have given you a different set of circumstances to deliver that exact same message. To deliver that exact same message. And so you actually learn a lot yourself during the teaching knowledge phase. During the teaching knowledge phase. And so these four types of knowledge are critical to your development, self-development, personal development, and business development. Learn knowledge. Knowledge you gain through observing and comprehension and learning. Activity knowledge. Knowledge you gain through the experience of doing. Modeling knowledge. Knowledge you gain by following the footsteps of said mentor or mentors and teaching knowledge, knowledge you gain by delivering the message and showing others how to do the exact same thing. Those are the four phases of knowledge. Those are the four types of knowledge. And remember, it's the second one where most people fail. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. I've always said to myself, if I'm in the learn, if I'm in the activity knowledge of anything, I want to do it swiftly. I like to use the phrase speed and boldness with my leadership team. Like if, if, if I'm in a phase where I don't know something, I'm going to move with speed and boldness through the activity as fast as possible. I'm not going to sit there and him and ha and try to figure out do I or don't I? No, man, I want to get through the activity phase as fast as possible because I know that's the hardest part. The sooner I get through the activity phase and learn what I need to learn, the better off we're going to be. You do the same thing. Trust me. Trust me on this one. Okay? And so listen, this has been another episode of Game Time with Noble Mike Jameson. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care and take charge.